friend, your friend, everyone's friend, a man that's not afraid to take care of an old friend, Blaine Jesus Christ tonight. Yeah. Let's hear it for the Fire Benight Band, you guys. How about it? All right. Yeah. Well, we want to welcome you to Fire Benight. My name is Blaine Bartell, and we're going to be talking about one of the most powerful movements in America, and in fact, around the world and that is Satanism. In fact, we're going to be talking about something even better than that. We're also going to be talking about the most powerful movement in the entire world, in the entire universe, and that is the movement of young people to serve Jesus Christ. Amen? Yeah. Right now, though, we've got something very special we want to do. We want to go into our studio audience. You all look so wonderful today, and we're going to just uh, talk to a few different people here. In fact, if I can get right through here. What we want to do, don't be afraid. We're just going to, we want to just find out what some of you believe uh, about God and about the devil. And first of all, I'm just going to ask you, uh, do you believe that uh, demons actually exist? Yes. yes. <laughs> How about you right there? You look like someone that probably is intelligent, knows theology. Devil worship is very prevalent in, in America. In fact, I don't know if you know about it. You see the newspapers human sacrifices going on, there's animal sacrifices, cannibalism, eating human flesh. Do you, sir, do you think that uh, human sacrifices are actually happening in America? Have you heard anything about that? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't have any doubt about that at all. Okay. I got another friend back here. Uh, what do you think? Uh, you've heard about all the different sacrifices that are happening. Uh, what do you think about all this? Yes, I do. I think it's a terrible thing and someone should do something about it too. <laughs> you don't like animal sacrifices, <laughs> no, I take it. No, no, no. <laughs> Good. Well, we've got a very special guest, actually a number of them on the program, too many to mention. One of them is Carmen. <laughs> and we've got uh, Bob Larson, plus a friend that you've probably seen on the last Fire of the Night. Now he's a permanent fixture right here. Please welcome Mr. Lee Wilson. <laughs> Don't touch me, Lee. Hey, um, <laughs> Lee, it's good to have you. It's exciting. This is our, our first show on the brand new set. I'll tell you, I'm thrilled. I'm very excited. They call me Mr. Excitement, not for a reason. I'm excited about being here. Yeah, I, I could tell that. <laughs> uh, Lee, we're talking about Satanism. It is real in America. I want to ask you, what do you think about demons? Do you think demons exist uh, in this country? Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, I believe that they're real, but it's not like they're over your shoulder every time you look around, you know? No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> with, this, about? with the Satanism that's going on, uh, kids killing their parents, committing suicide, sacrificing people, uh, do you feel like there's any threat at all to you personally? <laughs> A threat to me? Yeah. Man, let me tell you something. You guys have to, you guys have to understand something. See, why I, the way I grew up in my home, I mean, the devil was real for a while, but <laughs> my mom beat the devil out of us, so it's all gone now. <laughs> so we don't have to worry about that anymore, you know. <laughs> he went out of you at early childhood. Very, Good. very young Good. age, you know. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I picked up a newspaper the other day, and uh, it's probably one of the most credible newspapers in America. <laughs> Worldwide news, and you can see there it's got a number of things, healer baby, cure cancers. But at the top it says, Satan 
captured. Well, I've got bad news for some of you. Satan has not been captured. He's still on the loose, and that's why we're here right now. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse number 11, that we should have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. And that's what we intend to do on this Fire by Night program entitled Satanism Unmasked the Return. We'll be back later. <laughs> for you a blast of a book. I just made up funny. <laughs> it's my brand new release, How to Get Satan Out of the Big Forest. You may say, I didn't know there were Satanists in the Big Forest. That's why you need my book, Betty. You also need a Ranger Razor. <laughs> I just made another funny. In my book, you'll learn the three-pronged Ranger Force to call cleaning strategy. Seek. Locate. And destroy. <laughs> After all, our battle is not with flesh and blood. That's why we use 100% high-test dynamite. Blows them right out of the physical into the spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing you must do is look for signs that Satanists might leave. Hmm. Haven't found any yet, but I know they're out here. Ooh, I see some signs of satanic activity. There are more subtle signs, and then there are more obvious signs. Hey, there's a more obvious sign. If it had been a snake, it would have bit me. Ooh, I'll bet he won't have the guts to do that again. Hey, I just made another funny. I'm on a roll. Ah, now we've located an even more subtle sign. A satanic rock and roll album. And Tom LaVey sings Wayne Newton backwards. Ooh, that would be bad forward. Ooh, good one. And yet another sign. Ooh, scary movie videotapes. Nightmare on Elm Street in the big forest. Ooh. The Lost Boys in the big forest. Ooh, ooh. And leave it to Beaver in the big forest. Ooh, oh boy, I'll take this one back to the cabin. Uh-huh, just as I suspected, we have sought and located. Now, let's blow this pop stand. Ooh, what's this? Okay, looks like our strategy worked. We have successfully driven Satan out of the big forest. Now you need to order my book, How to Drive Satan Out of the Big Forest, and look forward to my new book, How to Drive Satan Out of the Mall. <laughs> to order Ranger Bob's new book, How to Get Satan Out of the Big Forest, write P.O. Box 12, The Big Forest. That's all the address you need. Here, going to the Warlock Interest tonight. What's your name? Pete. Pete. Okay, where are you from, Pete? Westminster. Okay, how old are you? Thirteen. All right. And uh, why do you like uh, the Warlock Pinchers and bands similar to them? Uh, what do you like about the music uh, so much? They rule. They rule. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, uh, why do they rule? I mean, what is it that you really think is really hot about them? Their lyrics. Their lyrics. Okay, well, let's take a look at some of their lyrics here, Pete. One of the, their lyrics say that they are the official sound of Satan. They are full of hate. They love uh, the fun and king of evil. He's Lord High Satan. We work for Satan. We're his henchmen. Okay, there's some lyrics. What do you think about those lyrics? About 20 other guys said it's sarcasm. Sarcasm. Now, what does sarcasm mean? They're like, they're just making fun of it. You know? So you don't think that they're really into it? No. Obviously, for some, Satanism is nothing more than a tool to promote the next big rock band. 
For many others who do take Satanism very seriously, though, a fad can turn to tragedy quickly. Dateline, Warren, Michigan. 15-year-old Stephanie Dubé was found brutally murdered and dismembered by an unidentified friend who discovered the skinned head of the girl in a refrigerator of a house that was occupied by 15-year-old Augustin Pena and his 21-year-old cousin, Jamie Rodriguez Jr. Rodriguez, an avowed Satanist who flaunts a pentagram tattoo on his chest, said that he and his cousin sat down at the kitchen table when they decided to kill Stephanie. They spread newspapers on the basement floor and brought their victim down, repeatedly stabbing her and later cutting her body into pieces. Rodriguez faces a life sentence for first degree murder and says that he feels no remorse. Stephanie was a ninth grade student at a Christian school in St. Clair Shores who had recently tattooed the number 666 on her chest in rebellion against her mother. Perhaps the most publicized case exposing the growing national crisis of Satan worship is the tragedy of Sean Sellers. Sean's slide into Satanism began with his obsession with the fantasy role-playing game Dungeons and Dragons. Little did he know that months later he would be drinking blood in front of his schoolmates as a part of his new pact with Satan to renounce God and break all of the Ten Commandments. He succeeded. On September 8, 1985, he shot a convenience store clerk, Robert Bowers, to death and walked out taking no money or merchandise, only the life of an innocent man. A few months later, he took the life of both his parents, shooting them in the head with a 44 revolver and as they slept. I began to believe that just because they were your family doesn't mean you have to love them. I love my friends. I love them because I choose to. Why should I love them? Because I have to, speaking of my family. And so I began to not love them. In fact, I told my mother that I didn't love her. And one night, I just snapped, something happened. And I just got up in the middle of the night and walked into the room and I shot them both in the head and killed them. What did you do after that? I laughed. I giggled, a hideous giggle. I just sat there and giggled as I watched the blood pour from my mother's head. I felt relief. I felt this big burden come up off my shoulders like at last I was free. I don't remember too much what happened after that. I remember waking up at a friend's house and then waking up in a jail cell, not really knowing what was going on. I destroyed my life because of Satanism. Behind me, you can see Unit F2, Death Row, and that's where Sean Sellers will spend 23 hours out of every day for the rest of his life until his execution. And yet there are people that say Satanism isn't that serious. It's just fun and games. But let me tell you something. You'll never convince Sean of that. It's dangerous, and it's got to be exposed. to welcome our special guest on the program this time. His name is none other than Carmen. Good to have you here, Carmen. How you doing, Blaine? And uh, we're on uh, the set of his one of his latest uh, Christian music videos, Revival in the Land. There's some awesome stuff being set up here, and uh, you'll see part of this video and uh, the show here. Carmen, uh, for those who maybe don't know about you, the very few, tell us how you got started in Christian music and kind of what the Lord's done in your life over the last 10 to 15 years. Well. 1976, I was pursuing a career in, in a nightclub singing and hoping to break into the big time. I moved from New Jersey to Las Vegas to uh, try to get going in the nightclub circuit out there. And I had a praying sister who had been praying for me for 11 long years. And uh, she led me to the Lord. It was about five years after that that I actually went into the music ministry full time. So since 1981, I guess I've been full time in the 
in the music ministry as we know it now. You know, there's a lot of talk today in the media about Satanism. Geraldo Rivera has done his program and they've had books and articles on it. Do you think the, the media has made it more popular than it really is? Do you think young people are really as involved in it as people are saying they are? From what I have learned, <clears throat> about 40% of uh, all the children under 18 years of age, young adults, are involved in the occult in one way, shape, or form. Over 40, 45,000 people, 40, excuse me, 45 million people are involved in uh, astrology, looking to the stars for their answers, which is, which is kind of a, a, a scary statistic because, you know, statistics, statistics tell us that 50 million people claim to be born again. They're catching up very quickly because people are looking for answers, they're looking for spiritual reality, but just because something is real doesn't make it good. Um, Ouija boards, tarot cards, Dungeons and Dragons, crystal balls, things that are doorways to a demonic realm, doorways to a spiritual dimension that the scriptures tell us is lethal to your soul, that you have absolutely, utterly no defense over except it be that the Spirit of God resides inside of you. And if the Spirit of God resides inside of you, you have no business in these things. The scripture tells us, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, not of his Ouija board, yeah. who gives to all men liberally and he won't hold back anything. A lot of people don't want to believe in Satan. They will believe in God, but they don't want to believe in Satan. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. If you're a thief, you don't want to be identified. You want to steal and you want to leave not ever letting the person know who you are because you're stealing. The gift of God is eternal life. You want to give somebody a gift, you want them to look in your eyes. Yeah. You want them to know what your name is and where you came from because yeah. you want to be there when they open it. You know, that's not the way Satan works. He doesn't want to identify himself. But as the light of God's word and the revelation of God's spirit shines down on the lives of people, the, the, the hidden works of darkness are being uncovered and we're realizing who the real enemy of our soul is. Yeah. The devil hates you, man. He hates me, you know why? Because every time he looks at you, he sees somebody that is made in the image and the likeness of God. You look like somebody that beat him up. Well, is there a disturbance in What was that? Sir, that's the reason all these demons are on crutches and wobbling. What's going on? Sir, that's what I've been trying to tell you. What is that? Sir, that is our problem. Another video uh, called Witch's Invitation, our show, uh, as everyone knows by now, is on Satanism. Uh, and there's kind of a story as to how that uh, came about lyrically. Tell us uh, the background on that. It was a, it was a true story. Uh, it actually happened. There was a friend of mine named Mario Murillo, who was uh, a holy terrorist. <laughs> he was a great <laughs> preacher. <laughs> Probably one of the great prophetic voices that are on the uh, horizon. Anyway. Make a long story short, he had an encounter with a witch. And um, it was a very interesting dialogue that took place. And um, we, when I heard it, my spirit leaped up inside of me. I leaped up inside of me. I leaped out of me. <laughs> and I says, this is a message that needs to be brought to the body of Christ. One peaceful afternoon, I picked up from my mailbox the strangest looking letter I'd ever seen. A chilling little envelope bordered with flying bats and eerie serpents whose eyes were tinted green. Now, the letter was addressed to me, so as I opened it, I froze. What I read turned my complexion three shades of blue. It said my name is Isaac Horowitz. I'm a male witch, a warlock. I feel I need to spend some time with you. Now, as a Christian from a little church with God's call on my life, a man of faith and power with a challenge to grow, I did what any saint would do in my situation. I tore it up, said, Lord, no way I'm gonna go. Then gently and methodically, the Holy Spirit spoke and reminded me, we're God's voice to our nation. 
It's the church's responsibility to witness. So reluctantly, I accepted this witch's invitation. He had the house you'd expect, the old English cottage, a nightmare on Elm Street special right to the core, the overgrown ivy, the gate that creaked when opened. Somehow you'd expect Freddy to answer this door. The doorbell rang a hollow gong, the knob twisted and then opened, and Isaac stood before me with a grin. His jet black hair and well-trimmed beard flowed with his black silk clothes. My skin crawled as he said, please come on in. His house was filled with every occultic symbol you could fathom. Hanging pentagrams and horoscope signs. A Ouija board and Dungeons and Dragons game set on the table. A crystal ball with an incandescent shine. And graciously he handed me some steaming herbal tea. Its presence caused my memory to jog. I thought of every horror flick I'd seen when I was a kid. And thought, man, you drink this stuff next day you'll be a frog. And he led me to a high back chair as he meticulously began to unfold his scenario with evil patience. I was given a giant leather-bound book jammed with newspaper clippings, thus the reason for this witch's invitation. With eagerness, he pointed to each article with pride. He said, I healed this woman through a Babylonian chant. You see, this man, I cured him while performing druid worship. I was paid to curse this man with AIDS by his aunt. On and on, page after page, delightfully he flaunted each incident for an hour without a breath. He said, do you realize through my understanding of the dark regions that I can make you rich or even curse someone to death? I sat literally intimidated by his immensity and demon power while his face shone with a satanic arrogant bliss. Then placing his hands on the arms of my chair and leaning into my face, he said, what can your God do to compete with this? I knew then how Moses felt when his rod turned to a serpent and the three Egyptian magicians did the same. It's as if you're sitting there in that stunned moment where your faith gets violated and all you feel is weak, powerless, and lame. I desperately and deeply prayed, saying, Jesus, give me wisdom. I don't want to put you through some foolish test. Then a shaft of light shot through my soul, igniting my eyes with fire. God stood me up and I threw the book back in his chest. That Isaac, I'll not compare God's miracles versus Satan's. The issue's not God's kingdom and Satan's lair. The real comparison is the condition of your soul and the condition of mine. And you puppet of the devil that I will compare. I said, my friend, one day they're coming for you. The soft associates in your incantations. The friendly demons you think you now control. The time will come when you'll be lying in bed, wheezing like a dying animal. When those spirits lay claim to the rights they own to your soul. Then the room will grow dark, and the most hideous evil faces you've ever seen will come flaming out of the floor with a yell. The vile informants that promised reincarnation will claw your spirit and victoriously drag your soul to hell. Then I grab the book and says, in that moment, which mantra, which incantation are you going to chant to tell them to leave you alone? I said, my friend, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt what I would say. I am bought with the blood of Jesus. Let me go. I said, Isaac, when you tossed that book in my lap, you gloated with a sinister victory. You rejoiced when you saw your name in black and white. 
and I, I rejoice, but not that your council of demons are subject to Jesus, but that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Then Isaac jumped up from his chair and screamed, you must leave now. I says, I will, but one last obligation. Next time, think twice before you rumble with a man of God. And by the way, thanks for your... Uh, Witch's Invitation. All right. We're back. I want to read you a scripture. It's found in the book of Matthew, chapter 28, and verse number 18. And Jesus is talking here. It says that he came and spoke unto his disciples and said this, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And then he commissioned them and told them to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And I want to ask you a very simple question. If all power was given to Jesus and he in turn gave it to the church, how much power is left for the devil? Not very much. And you need to realize something. Although Satanism is real, although there's all kinds of evil things going on in the world, if you know that you've been empowered and commissioned by Jesus, you've got nothing to fear. Now, speaking of the devil, we've uh, got someone that's come to our studio uh, today, and uh, he was actually one of the stars in Carmen's music video, which is Invitation, and uh, he's right here. And uh, I really don't know his name, so I'll ask him, uh, what is your name anyways? Fred. <laughs> okay, Fred. You know, Fred, I, I don't know. I just expected you uh, to sound different. I expect you to be a lot more... Uh... A lot more like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more like that. I mean, wh why don't you talk like that more often? Well, quite frankly, it uh, <clears throat> gives me a sore throat, you know. <laughs> Laryngitis. Pretty bad. Gives you a sore throat. You know, one of the things in the, in the video that I thought was really neat was the way uh, you and your buddy there just kind of lit up all over the place. I mean, you were just like glowing in the dark. Uh, you know, how'd you do that? Well, it's uh, special effects, Blaine. Uh, <laughs> something called rotoscoping. Did it just for the video. Okay. So, uh, do you think maybe you, you could do this right now for us? Just do some of that rotoscoping? <laughs> Boy, I wish I could. <laughs> of course, uh, my friend here says sometimes I uh, glow like that early in the morning. <laughs> Yeah, I was <clears throat> noticing, uh, noticing your little buddy there. He uh, seems like kind of a, I don't know, I guess a more quiet demon. Well, uh, you remember that Bible character? Oh, what was his name? It uh, w wouldn't be Jesus. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, uh, yeah, that, that guy right there. Well, remember when he uh, cast out a uh, deaf and dumb spirit? Well, uh, <laughs> this is the dumb spirit. He can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> yep, <sighs> you bet. This guy here is a demon of bad humor. Anyway. Yeah. Hey, uh, Blaine, see that girl there in the uh, third row? She's awful cute. Why don't you uh, go up and give her a kiss? Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm not going to do that. You see, I'm married. I'm committed to my wife. Okay, let's uh, go out and get a beer. <laughs> no, no. Okay, uh, why don't you uh, jump off this building? It's really high. I'm sure angels will catch you. <laughs> you see, you need to understand something. You cannot make me do these things. Come on, Blaine, do it! <laughs> I don't care how deep you talk, you and all your demon friends from hell need to learn one very important thing. Greater is he that is in us who are Christians than you that is in the world. And don't you forget it either. Yeah! We'll be right back. Widespread is Satanism in North America. Well, it's serious enough for hospitals like this one, Columbine Psychiatric Center, right here in Denver, Colorado, to have entire programs dedicated to the treatment of satanic behavior. In fact, there are also centers in Houston, in uh, Chicago, and out in California. This center right here has an adult program. In fact, the average age is 28 years old. It's full, and they got a waiting list. I talked to uh, Chuck Webb, an administrator at the program. He said that the majority of their patients began their destructive descent into Satanism in their teenage years. In fact, they're getting hundreds of calls to begin an adolescent program. I want you to know something. The world is taking Satanism very, very seriously. And I believe it's about time that the church did the same. 
we've had some in our practice here definitely that were used in a ritual in in, an, in a ritual worship of satan um, and we've interviewed others that have come to us to tell us about their experiences we're finding satanism to be a very serious problem in our youth today uh, not only does it create problems in terms of uh, the spiritual and emotional impact on our teenagers but also there's a, a dramatic increase in crime in our culture associated with Satanism. Crime. Although the official Church of Satan denies criminal involvement, law enforcement agencies across America are forming special task forces to investigate ritualistic crimes. Detective Lee Orr served on such a task force. A young 12-year-old boy killed himself with a shotgun and uh, it really literally blew his head off and it was really a, a sorry situation and in the investigation what were brought up some things about the occult and at that time i had not really been you know that exposed i'm sure over the years i had seen things that i didn't relate and didn't understand this individual whose name i can't uh, really relate to you right now because it is still an investigation is evidently involved in the occult and information that we received is that he had several young male juveniles that he gets into his home, gives them drugs, evidently gets them addicted, hooked on the drugs, and then therefore gets them into his occult. His uh, wife or ex-wife had uh, cooked their young child, their young baby in the oven and killed it. Uh, we're not sure if this was a result of the satanic activity, but it would appear that way. I was called to the scene of a graveyard desecration and at that scene, uh, I experienced and uh, witnessed uh, evidence that to me clearly suggested that people who entered that graveyard entered it for, for motives other than anything that I could explain uh, in my policeman mind, uh, that the motivation was obviously spiritual and occultic. Experts say there are as many as 50 to 60,000 human sacrifices a year, a result of an estimated 100,000 self-styled Satanists in this country. In 1988, Los Angeles had 64 preschools with reported satanic activity. Read about it in the newspapers, it's on the streets, but what is the religion of Satanism and why does it prey on the young? The fact is the majority of Satanists have nothing to do with any kind of an organized uh, institution. Uh, there are a number of levels of Satanism, all the way from kids who are just uh, dabbling around in it to those who develop their own self-styled ceremonies, to the institutional Satanists, to those who have been practicing generational Satanism going back for many centuries. This is the Satanic Bible, which was written by Anton LaVey back in, uh, I believe he wrote it in 1973. He started the uh, Church of Satan in California in 1966. That was the same year that Time Magazine had on the uh, front page of their magazine that God is dead. And they formed a church, he did, Anton LaVey, which had some celebrities in it, mainline celebrities, Jane Manfield, uh, Marilyn Monroe, Sammy Davis Jr. This is all documented, I'm not making this up. We have a, a nation filled with dysfunctional kids whose life experience is hate and rejection. You talk to them about love, esteem, and, and personal values, and uh, they find great difficulty relating to that because that's not been their life experience. What Satanism does is to codify this bitterness and inner rage that they have. It gives them an excuse to be angry, an excuse to get revenge. It gives them an institutional religious philosophy that says it's okay to be bad. In fact, being bad is what you should be. There might be parents that are watching this program right now and saying, man, I don't want my kid to get involved in Satanism. How do Satanists recruit uh, young people into Satanism and what can we do to try to stop it? Well, first of all, uh, the recruiting field of Satanism is only as fertile as the dysfunctionalism of a child who is open to it. Mm. And so it starts back in the home where a child is given the right type of love and affirmation, the right type of spiritual values, so that he's never even going to be a potential recruit. Now, if that is not the case, and the parents, if they have a dysfunctional family from either a psychological or spiritual standpoint or both, have got to be honest and admit that, 
and that their child is a potential recruit, then they have to be extra cautious about the types of things that would suck a kid into this. And they are fairly obvious. The music that he listens to, the friends that he keeps, the literature that he reads, not any one of these things, or even a combination necessarily means the kid is involved in Satanism, but if there is an obsession with these types of things, uh, some indication that his life is totally absorbed around black metal music or absorbed around reading occult literature or seeing horror films, then the parents had best start asking some very serious questions. After I had knelt on an altar of Satan, covered in blood, and completely dedicated my life to Satan, after I had killed people, after I had done all these things, Jesus still loved me. That was awesome. That was incredible. And I remember I knelt down on the floor and I said, Lord, here I am again. If you'll take me back, I'll serve you. caught that serial killer. Oh, Captain Crunch is on sale. Really? Mom, these, uh, these paper plates are not washing up very well. Trick or treat. Smell my feet. Give me something good to put in my sack. <laughs> Halloween is not till next Friday, bud. It's not tonight. <laughs> no way. You're all dressed up. You look just like your mom. <laughs> and you look ridiculous, Clarence. Because they're cousins, hey, identical cousins all the way. <laughs> Let me ask you something, Clarence. What are you doing even participating in Halloween? A lot of people might think that I'm too old for tricks or treat, but you're never too old to eat candy. Candy? You got some candy? No, all I got are a bunch of rocks. Clarence, you make light of Halloween. You ought to pay attention to what that Christian comedian says. What's his name, honey? That guy that used to be that ex-Satanist high priest. Uh, he wrote that book called uh, uh, Satan Kicker. Uh, uh, you know, Bible seller or something like that. Now, he said that Halloween is the devil's holiday. I wish the devil would take a holiday. Honey, you always make such a big deal out of Halloween. It's because Halloween is a big deal. <laughs> John, it's children dressed up in costumes getting candy. There's no harm in that. You guys, you guys, it's the cops. The cops are right outside our window. They're in the neighbor's lawn. Holy cow, Batman. Let's go check it out. Let's go, Robin. Sorry about that. Stop being Robin. What is that guy's name anyway? Officer, uh, Doug Collins, I live just down the street. Uh, what happened here? Anything I can do to help? Son, it's a crime scene. Dead people. I'm Batman. Tell your friends about me. Clarence. <laughs> I'm, I need to work out a little bit. Officer, I'm Batman. Is there anything I can do to help? Batman, you're a little late. They're already dead. Get out of here, kid. Halloween's a week away. I know that. Ah, 
Sir, what happened here anyways? The parents of that young man over there were murdered in cold blood. Make a note of Batman and his ugly sister in apron. Boom! Boom, man! I'm sorry. What happened? Are you okay? I came home. I was out with some friends, and I came home, and I found my parents in bed. It was shot. Shot? Well, who did it, man? I don't know. Man, I'm so sorry. If there's anything that we can do to help, just let us know. In fact, why don't you come stay at our house tonight if you want, okay? No, man, it's okay. Um, some friends of mine are taking me over to my grandparents. You ready, Bo? Yeah, man. Let's get out of here. It's hard to believe something like this can happen in your own neighborhood. I wonder who did it. Clarence, this is serious. What do you think? I don't think I'm going to be trick-or-treating here this Halloween. That's it. Let's go tell your folks. You guys won't believe it! You won't believe it! The new kid on the block, his parents, his parents got murdered in cool blood or something! Clarence, put a sock in it. Mr. and Mrs. Davis have been shot. Dad, lock the door. Bumbo found him. I can't imagine what he's going through right now. You mean Pete Davis's parents down the street? Well, Bo's his nickname, Bo Pete. Well, I wonder if they knew the Lord. I think what's important now is, does Bo know Jesus? So I'm not going out as Batman. I'm going out as a turkey. <laughs> a turkey? Why a turkey? Well, that way, in case your dad gives me a hard time about it being Halloween and everything, I can just tell him it's for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Get it? Turkey? Dressing? Dressing? Turkey? <laughs> Hey, Bo, where are you going? Need a ride? Over to Laura's house. Hey, hop in, man. I didn't know you were going out with Laura. Yeah, it's been a couple of weeks now. I thought your parents said you weren't supposed to be going to... Oh. I'm sorry, man. That's fine. We can talk about my parents. We can talk about something else. Anything else. All right, well, why don't we talk about you, Bo? I mean, what are you going to do now? I don't know. Everything's still a blur. That's, uh, that's understandable. Hey, I just want to let you know that if you if you need anything at all, I'm here for you, okay? So it's Dolores. Who's Dolores? <laughs> no, not Dolores, the Lord. You know, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, the Trinity. Yeah, I know all about that stuff, Dad. You do? Yeah, I do. Bo, Bo, listen, I know that what you're going through must be like... Hell? Yeah, I... I guess you could say that. I mean, after all, what, what happened to your mom and dad, you know that's straight from the devil. You, you know that, don't you? Right. I know that. Well, wait, let me pray for you before you go. I don't think so. Why don't you pray for my parents? All right. We'll see ya. All right, let me just get this straight. You, you don't see anything wrong with, with innocent children going throughout the neighborhood, innocently collecting innocent candy, which could be poisoned on the night they call Halloween, which is also the night that Satanists and witches sacrifice animals and sometimes human beings. I suppose you have no problem participating in that either. Well, what do you want to do? What would be good to do? What would Jesus do? Oh, I don't know what Jesus would do. If a little child came to his front door and asked for candy, would he open it and say, I love you, and just slam it in his face? Mickey Joe, l l let's just put the shoe on the other foot here. What would you like to do? 
maybe uh, go out and decorate our front lawn like heaven, huh? Maybe, maybe we all dress up like angels. <laughs> Bring in the Ark of the Covenant, fill it full of gospel tracts, and just witness to everyone that comes into our front yard. Is that what you want to do? See, that's a good idea. Thank you. All right, now, our bathroom's just right up those stairs. If you need any help with that little ghost sheet of yours, you just let me know, okay? Gee, thanks, lady. Appreciate it. Have you seen my buddy friend? Fred? Fred? Little guy? Midget? Yeah, uh, upstairs in the bathroom. Hey, bud, we've got about three gallons of that stain left out in the garage. If you want to use it, feel free to. We're actually out of tracks. Out of tracks? We've given them all away. I've gotten to pray with three kids tonight. Oh, Mom, and I've met so many people. I didn't even know who lived in the street. Oh, your dad. Did he go in the garage with Bud Decker? See, he's been trying to witness them for six months. Look at Dag Angel. A fallen angel. Oh, no. oh, oh, Connie, go give him a hand. I, I think they already did. Clarence, what have you been doing? Bobbing for lemons. <laughs> so, like, Doug, you uh, you think it was the devil that told you to jump off the pinnacle of your house? Yeah. Ow! Quit it, Clarence. That hurts. Sorry. All right. Hey, was that the satanic high sign? No, that wasn't the satanic high sign. This is like the international symbol for love right here. And then like this, this is hook em horns. And then this is like hang loose. And this is the satanic high sign. Well, don't do it. You might get someone demon possessed. Now stop it. All right. Same thing every Friday. I'll uh, trade you your uh, bologna sandwich and Twinkies for it. What do you got? Got uh, filet mignon and lobster thermidor and chocolate mousse. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. Now I can be like everyone else and eat Twinkies. <laughs> hey, Dad, heard about your little uh, Halloween accident in the front yard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Don't you know you can't be an angel on Halloween? <laughs> oh, check it out, police escort. Whoa. Somebody. Big <laughs> 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 hey, trouble. Get your hands up. Get your hands up. Get your hands up. Get your hands up. Take the keys out of your vehicle. Throw them on the ground. Take the keys out of the vehicle, throw them on the ground. Drop them. Passenger, get out on the grass over there. Get out on the grass, put your face Ow. down, get out. Ow. You in the back seat, climb through. What's going on? You in the on? back seat, climb through. What is this? Shut your mouth and climb through the seats and get out. Put your face down on the grass. Driver, you get out, do the same thing. Crawl across, crawl across, get out. Put your face down on the grass, get out. Turn look to the right. Right hand. Left hand. Your right hand. What's the charge? Two counts of murder. Has the jury reached its verdict? We have, Your Honor. The court will now hear the verdict. Will the defendant please rise? We, the jury, find the defendant, Peter Bradley Davis, guilty on both counts of murder of the first degree. Counsel, would you like to poll the jury? Yes, we would, Your Honor. Each juror will now state their verdict. 
Your Honor, I find this man guilty. 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 Peter Bradley Davis, will you please approach the bench? Do you have any final comments you'd like to make to the court before I pronounce sentencing? I would just like to say that I loved my parents. I would never do anything to hurt them. Peter, you have been tried as an adult in this court and have been found guilty on two counts of murder in the first degree. In that finding, these aggravating circumstances have also been cited. One, the murder was especially heinous, atrocious, and cruel. And two, there exists a probability that you will pose a continuing threat to society. Therefore, I hereby enter judgment that you, Peter Bradley Davis, be sentenced to death by lethal injection. my hands a letter that was written by a 17 year old boy to his girlfriend I want to read it to you it goes like this dear Nan by the time you get this letter I will already have shot myself I just wanted you to know that I really love you I know every time you told me about God that I tell you to go to hell and I pretend not to listen but I really was listening you're probably wondering why I killed myself or why I killed myself after talking to you last night the truth is I was getting too deep into Satanism and the power that I had was controlling me instead of me controlling it I got really scared when I went before the committee. The committee was the, the satanic governing group within this boys high school in San Antonio, Texas. It says that they said that I couldn't get out. They said I must get in to Satanism even deeper or I'd die. I really wanted to tell you everything then, but they probably would have killed you too. And I've told you too much about them anyways. I really wanted to accept your God into my life, but I'd already given myself to Satan. And besides, God doesn't want or need someone like me. What good would I have done for him? I love you, and please forgive me. By now, I'm probably with my God, burning in hell. This young man today is dead. He shot himself before Nan could ever get to him. There are young people all over this country that are just like this young man, that are searching and looking for help, that need God in their life. Satan is ripping so many young people off. We've seen in this program the sobering and startling truth of what Satanism and devil worship and other things are doing to this generation. I want you to know that Satan hates this generation of young people. And it's for a very real reason. It's found in the book of Isaiah chapter 14 and verse number 12. It says this, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit, and they that see thee shall look narrowly upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble and did shake the kingdoms? You see, Satan got it in his mind thousands of years ago that he was going to take over the kingdom of heaven. He was one of God's highest angels, and he decided, I'm going to take over. It's all going to be mine. And God took Satan and, and threw him down to this planet Earth. That's why you've seen a lot of the satanic albums and things that uh, uh, go with Satanism. The lightning bolt, just what Satan uh, had happen. He was cast down to uh, Earth just like lightning. And ever since, 
He's been on a vendetta to destroy God and God's people any way that he can. And he's perverted and corrupt enough to think that he can do it. But I want you to know something that Satan is a total loser and he knows it. And you need to know it. See, it says in the book of Philippians, chapter 2, that Jesus took on himself as the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. But wherefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name. I want you to know that if you're serving the devil, if you're on his side, you're serving a loser. The name of Jesus is higher and greater than the name of Satan. And the Bible says that every knee will bow to Jesus Christ. Every tongue will confess that he is Lord. There'll be one day that Madonna bows her knee to Jesus and says, Jesus, you are Lord. There'll be a day that two live crew gets on their knee and says, Jesus is Lord. Ted Turner will bow his knee and say, Jesus is Lord one day. And one day you will too. And you've got a decision to make. Am I going to let Satan rip me off and be forced to bow my knee to Jesus one day? Or am I going to make a decision right now to give my life to someone who really does love me, who really does care for me, who really does want to help me and want to set me free and deliver me? Am I going to give my life to Jesus? Everyone's got a decision. God won't force you. And I believe there's people watching this program right now that are saying, I need to do that. I need Jesus in my life. I need love. I need hope. I need forgiveness. Don't be like this young man and think you don't have a chance. You do have a chance. All you need to do is call on the name of the Lord, and he will save you. That's a promise from this word, this Bible right here. Jesus has come that you might have life. Receive that life right now. I want you, where you are right now, to bow your head and close your eye, eyes with me right now. I want you to consider your life as I pray for you right now. Father, I pray for everyone that's watching this program, that you will cause them to make a right decision with their life with you, God. Lord, that you help them to see that Jesus is to be exalted in their life. That Jesus, you are the one that died on the cross to forgive them and to give them eternal life. Show them that they can stand up and call you Lord of their life and receive that eternal life and know they're going to heaven and step on the devil's head and stop what he's been trying to do. In the name of Jesus, Lord, set them free right now as they watch this program by the power of your Holy Spirit. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Exciting conclusion of our first show right here in the new studio, live studio audience. It's been a really good program. I want to thank all of you for coming and thank you for being a part of Fire Up Night. Once again, I want to remind you next time we're going to be having the exciting conclusion of Satanism Unmasked, the return, the conclusion of Family First. Carmen will be back. We're also going to be doing an interview with Bob Larson and finding out about his recent tour with the satanic band Slayer. I want to thank the cast and crew and also a very special person who made this show possible, executive producer Willie George and our pastor. God bless you. Till next time, stay fired up.